So doctor, how do I know that the lump in my testicle is cancer? Well, the question I'm going to ask you is how many men do actually examine their testicles? If I ask the room of men, I probably will not get many fingers up. So I'm asking you, when is the last time you've checked your testicles in the last 12 months? And you probably are not going to raise your hand. Testicular examination is very important because it tells you what's normal and what's abnormal. So usually it's recommended to check your testicles at least once a month. Similar to when women check their breasts at least once a month, looking for breast lumps or anything abnormal of the breast. And that's the same thing you should do with your testicles. For example, it's knowing what's normal and what's abnormal. So it can be normal to have one testicle larger than the other, which is usually the right testicle larger than the left. And it's also normal to have one testicle hanging lower than the other, which can usually be the left testicle hanging lower than the right. Testicular examination is also important to identify any signs of infection, inflammation, lumps and bumps, swelling of the scrotum, which we'll talk about later, as well as anything that you might feel is abnormal. Now, the best place to do a self-examination is usually in a hot environment, such as have, when having a hot bath or in the shower, because the skin of the scrotum relaxes and allows the testicles to hang down so you can examine properly. Ideally, you want to do this in a standing position. You can also stand in front of a mirror. And for those who have partners, you can also ask your partner to examine your testicles if you're not really someone that remembers to do it. But I would definitely recommend examining your testicles yourself so that you are familiar with your own testicles. So let's imagine that this is a testicle, okay? So when you're examining the testicle, the first thing that you want to look at is just a general look. Imagine this is in a scrotum. So you want to look at the scrotum, look for any swelling of the scrotum. Also look at the whole genital. Look at the penis, look for any signs of rashes, any unusual skin changes like ulcers or warts, which can be an indication of a sexually transmitted disease. If there's swelling in the scrotum, that's usually called a hydrosil, which is usually due to some other factor such as trauma or cancers for instance and then you want to feel when you feel the scrotum you can actually feel that it's fluidy or that there is a fluid like swelling in the scrotum then you also now want to feel the testicles you've got your right and your left testicle it doesn't matter what you feel first but what you want to do is you want to get your testicle which is usually the size of a bird's egg like 15 mil or could be the size of a small chicken egg which is about 35 mil so this egg is slightly bigger than what a normal testicle would be so you want to put your thumb and your fingers between the testicle and you want to gently roll your fingers along the testicle you can start from the bottom and then walk your way towards the sides and towards the top you know when you're feeling the testicle you can feel for the texture you know is it smooth can you feel any lumps and bumps you know, like I said, you can also feel the size. If it's too small, there's a condition called testicular atrophy, where basically it can be due to a congenital disorder such as Klinefelter syndrome, which happens at birth due to a chromosomal abnormality. It can be due to any underlying illnesses where you basically had chemotherapy or radiotherapy. It can be due to side effects of medication. It can be due to excess alcohol intake. It can be due to stress. And usually you need to be referred to a specialist for further investigation. Also remember the shape of the testicle is important. Like I said, it's an oval egg shaped testicle. Any difference in shape can be due to distortion, due to a fluid or lumps, for example. So after filling one testicle, then you want to proceed to fill the other testicle as well. But also remember that it's not just the testicle to examine. You also want to examine the tubes that lead to the testicle. You've got a tube called the epididymis, where basically your sperm is usually stored after maturation, where it can now travel to fertilize the egg. You've also got spermatic cord and veins called vas deferens, you know, which are also leading up to the testicle. And this usually supplies blood to the testicle. So what happens if you find a lump? So if you find a lump, the most common place to actually find a lump is in the epididymis, which I said is the tube that leads to the testicle. You know, you need to find out what's the size of the lump. Usually a benign lump such as a cyst is a pea-sized lump. It's usually smooth, it's firm, it's not painful. But in some cases, you might have a dull ache in the, in the testicle, like a dragging sensation. In most cases, a cyst can go by itself, but it can take weeks or months to disappear. But in some cases, it can become, like I said, painful or get bigger. Or you might just want to know what it is. So in that instance, you can speak to your doctor and your doctor can send you for an ultrasound of the testicle that confirms that this is what we call an epididymal cyst. And usually for an epididymal cyst, you either do nothing, you leave it, take painkillers as necessary, or you can decide if you want to go for minor surgery, but it's usually not necessary in most cases. 
Now, the most important condition most people worry about, obviously, is testicular cancer. Now, testicular cancer is quite rare, about 1 in 250 men, and the age group is usually between 14 to 35. So it's very important that for teenagers from the age of 13, you start examining your testicles so that you know what's normal and what's abnormal. So usually you're looking for a hard lump that might be painful, especially examining the testicle. If the testicle is painful or tender, you're looking for the presence of any fluid in the scrotum called a hydrosyl. You might look for other features such as back pain or you might have breast enlargement as well. So in this case, you want to speak to the doctor straight away because you need to be referred for further investigations such as ultrasound, CT scans, biopsies, blood tests and treatment could either be surgery, radiotherapy or chemotherapy. Another thing to look out for, as I mentioned, is called a hydrosyl, which is swelling in the scrotum or swelling around the testicle itself due to the presence of fluid. This can be due to injury or trauma to the testicle can also be due to cancers and usually what they will do is they'll take some fluid out of the scrotum and test it to see exactly what's causing the hydrosyl. In majority of cases there's no obvious cause for the hydrosyl and it usually goes by itself and most cases are thought to be actually viral. You find that it's actually more common in babies than it is in adults. Another thing to consider is what we call a testicular torsion. Now this is a medical emergency and it happens when the blood vessels or the somatic cord twist upon itself or the testicle itself twist upon itself and can be very painful. The pain is usually 10 out of 10. You might find that you have what we call a high riding testicle. The testicle might be quite hard and painful to touch and usually you need to go to the hospital within six hours to have surgery otherwise you will lose the testicle permanently. Now another condition to look out for is what we call a varicocele. This is when you have enlarged veins leading to the testicle. Now usually this does not cause no problems but you might have dull ache and in some men, it can actually affect sperm production and cause problems with fertility and usually you'd have surgery for that. But in most cases, you just leave alone and you don't have to do anything about it. Another condition to look out for is infection, such as epididymitis, where basically you might have infection, which presents with swelling, tenderness of the scrotum, it might be quite hot and warm to touch, you might feel unwell in yourself, you might have pain and passing urine, in some cases you might notice unusual discharge from the penis as well, and that's usually if it's due to some infection such as chlamydia or gonorrhea in younger men, and in older men it can actually be to a urinary tract infection. Now another thing to look out for, which is quite rare, but usually presents mostly in babies than in adults, is called an undescended testicle, usually around three to six months, you know, the testicle starts to descend into the scrotum, but in some cases the testicle remains in the lower abdomen and is what we call an undescended testicle. Now, if this is not treated, this can lead to fertility and can also cause an increased risk of testicular cancer. So these are the conditions to look out for when examining your testicles. Remember, you have to do it once a month, do it standing up, best to do it in a warm environment such as in a hot bath or having a hot shower during or after. And if there's anything abnormal or unusual that you're worried about, speak to your doctor.